Hi, well I've got a very nice pair of shoulders here, a very nice high quality leather and it's to make a good batch of belts. And it's very roughly about three millimeters thick and there's about 12 square foot of it. So I should get a good number out of that. Along its longer length it's about four foot and then across its width it's about three foot. So what I'll do, I'll get the longer belts, men's belts, obviously off the longer length and then as you work across the shoulder with the thinner bits, one can make up ladies' belts, children's belts. So really trying to avoid wastage as much as possible. And the bits I cut off, I'll try and use to make belt keepers. So basically try and use as much of the material as possible, because it is obviously quite expensive. But it is better if you can get hold of some shoulders to make your own belts, because you can select the nice piece of leather you want to use and you can check it for quality and you know, you know you're going to get a nice consistent piece of leather. So that's what I've done here, let's get cutting. Tool wise I've got a very long ruler there, I've got a shorter cutting ruler, a rotary knife and a hook click knife and a belt cutter. Well the first tool I'm going to use is this rotary cutting knife and these are very reasonable to buy and are very effective for leather work. I do actually have some saddlers knives, the curved half moon type saddlers knives and even quarter moon ones but actually for consistent cutting I do find these rotary knives very good. The thing you do have to watch about them though is you, on this model the little back screw doesn't get too loose otherwise the blade suddenly starts wandering. But beyond that I find for up to about three millimeters they're absolutely fine if you're doing straight lines. First cut is always a difficult one because once you've got a straight edge to work to it's not so bad but it's getting this first edge lovely and straight. If you get this waving wrong you'll hit problems the whole way. So I've got this positioned where I want my cut line and I'm now going to go along with my rotary knife and do a little bit of cutting. And the idea of this is actually not to try and get a complete cut in one pass but just make a nice little mark along. You'll find that once you've got a cut line blade mark it's quite easy to fall back into it. But it's making sure that it doesn't move while you do that first cut line. And that you keep your blade upright and firmly against your ruler. So just take your time. Once one's got one cut line, it's easy to go back over and do a repeat and a repeat and roll the knife up and down. And you'll actually then get quite a nice cut edge. But you want this to be, as I say, a straight edge and an upright edge. So keep that knife upright. Don't let it wobble one side or the other. So there you are, that's my first nice long straight edge cut, which is good. So I'll use this scrap material for making up some belt keepers, that won't go wasted. If you've, if you've done this well, you'll have a nice squared off line here, which is what I've got here, so that's gone well, I'm pleased to say. So this is what I mean by nicely squared off, clean cut. And that's what you're aiming for. You don't want that obviously ragged and uneven and sloping, but a nice 90 degree clean cut. And it will make the next stage so much easier if you get that right. Now you could just carry on cutting strips of leather with a rotary knife. And you would get perfectly acceptable belts, but it's far easier to use a strap cutter. And here I have a strap cutter. You can make one of these. It's a very simple tool. You can get metal ones. Um, the metal ones are quite expensive, but these wooden ones are very reasonable and I think they're well worth having. <laughs> all, all it is, it's a little like a razor blade in there, a very sharp blade, and there's a little measuring scale, which frankly you don't really need, but you can set the distance from the blade from your flat anvil edge, for want of a better word, that your leather will be rubbing along. I'll show you in a minute. So if you want to strap 15 millimeters, you just put that under 15 millimeters. You adjust this little wing nut for the thickness of your lever. You have a handle to hold it. You feed your lever through and cut it on the blade. So let me try and show you what I mean. 
Here's my lever. I've set the thickness already. Feed it in. So here are the levers. The flat edge of the lever is going along that nice flat surface. And in a minute, it will hit the blade. When I get to the width of about 15 millimeters is what I've got here. So that's now beginning to hit the blade. It's a bit difficult to do this holding it for the camera, but the idea then is you can pull your lever through, keeping it flat down on the bed of the tool the whole time. It is, believe me, easier to do this when you're not having to bend around your camera, but never mind, let's just I want to try and show you how it works in practice. And it does cut a very nice strap. So I'm trying to keep my thumb down so there's a bit of pressure on the lever there. And you can see it's separating out. So there you have it. A nice evenly whipped, accurately cut bit of strapping. And I'll use that for belt keepers. So as I say, I'm trying not to waste material here as it is expensive. But that's a strap cutter tool. So I'll carry on and I'm going to cut the width of the belt next. What I do find it's worth doing is actually testing a bit of leather against one of your buckles because if a buckle say is an inch and a half you'll find some are plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch. So it is worth trying to get a nice width that matches your buckles well. Well, here's a small selection of all the types of buckles you can get. And I mean, they're solid brass ones, chrome ones, single overlaps, double overlaps, wire formed, cast, you name it, it's pretty well here. And some people, for perhaps more formal occasions, like to have the chrome or the slightly more sophisticated brass finishes. I, I always personally quite like the simple saddler type buckles in solid brass, but it depends really what you want them for. And, um, well, here's the selection. <laughs> I always have a couple of little test pieces of leather at known width. So this one's an inch and a half. And you see, this is a sort of continental style of buckle, but it's too loose. That wouldn't look quite right. So this is one of the advantages of cutting your own straps. You can get them to the exact fit so they look nice in the belt. And you get a higher quality product. So here, inch and nine sixteenths. And that's nice. You see, you take another buckle. So a more traditional English buckle here. It will be imperial proper. Inch and a half. Quite nice. Can't quite get the inch and nine sixteenths in. It's a bit too tight. And that wouldn't turn happily. So your customer wouldn't be very happy with that. So it is worth trying to cut a few at one width, a few at another width, and then you've got a good selection and you can make sure that your belts are very nice belts. So that's what you're after, one nice belt with a nice sharp edge to it. It is easier to cut at table height and you avoid the potential for your cutter end to mark on your lever. So if you get up to working height you can keep that far more straight and parallel than if it's down on the ground. But I've now got this as, as a nice comfortable working height and it's well supported by the table and it will be easier to keep this tool at the right sort of angle. So again let's go along. It does cut remarkably easily when you think how thick this leather is and how tough it is. It is easier to cut the thicker bits of leather than thin leather, so if you're cutting thin leather, do make sure your knife blade is very sharp. Somehow with thicker leather, it's odd, it's a bit like sawing thicker bits of wood, they can be easier to saw accurately. <laughs> As I was saying, I'm suddenly going to go, of course, I'm, I'm not careful, I'm fine. But...
One other little tip just worth saying actually is make sure you don't mark the surface of your lever with the end of your strap cutter. If you tilt it too much you can mark your top surface so if anything tilt it downward. I've been constantly checking my edge for straightness and I have had to trim it once so I went slightly off at one point but do watch out for that as well. Okay, slight tilt down. Well, 14 so far and I've still got a fair bit of material here, probably enough for another 9 or so, maybe 10, so that would be 23 belts from the shoulders. Not too bad. Well, I now have a nice selection of belts ready for working on, so that will keep me busy for a while. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing that film about how I cut my leather belts. And thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions, just pop them down below and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks.